Yo guys, welcome to Shine Gaming. Riot just released details of the new champion's abilities. Rel, who is a tanky support. I thought I'd make a quick video going through these abilities and explaining how I think these abilities will be used in an actual game. So I hope you enjoy. So her passive is called Break the Mold. It says that she attacks very slowly. So I'm guessing permanently throughout the game, your auto attacks are gonna be unusually slow, kind of like Senna. So it's gonna have a weird feel to it, but you temporarily steal a portion of your target's armor and magic resistance to deal bonus damage damage based on the amount stolen. So breaking that sentence down, it's saying that if you're gonna attack someone, you should attack the tank who has loads of armor and magic resist because you're stealing a portion of it. So you yourself will get more armor and magic resist and you'll also deal greater damage because your bonus damage scales with however much you've stolen. So if for example, you're in a team fight and you wanna stay alive for as long as possible, you wanna attack the enemy tanks. And then it says, additionally, Rel can siphon resistances from multiple different foes to grow extremely tanky. So just one thing to note, it is a temporary stealing of their armor and magic resist, so it's not something that will stack throughout the game. And because they're specifically saying you can stack it, well, you can siphon resistances from multiple different foes, I'm guessing that if you auto attack an enemy tank twice, it won't really do anything. I think it probably just stacks one time and that's it. So that's probably why they're saying you can attack multiple champions. So if there's like two tanks, you'll want your first auto attack be on one of the tanks and then the second auto attack on the second tank to gain the max amount of uh, resistance as soon as possible. Moving on to her Q, Shattering Strike. Rel stabs forward with her lance, breaking any shields and damaging all enemies hit. But the damage does decrease after the first target. So if you want to poke most effectively, you want to do it when there's no minions in the way. And I'm guessing the damage is applied well, obviously after the shield's gone, so it's essentially treating the shield as if it's just not existing, which means the ADC can just go in even if there's a shield, as long as the ADC is going in straight after the Q's been used. If Rel has an ally bound with E, attract and repel, she and that ally recover health for each champion hit by this ability. So first of all, during a team fight, if Rel manages to get a Q on a lot of enemies when they're teamed up, then you're gonna heal the most and in lane obviously hitting one champion should be okay and obviously if you can line them both up that'll be even better and it doesn't say here but i wonder whether the heal scales with the damage your q does so for example if you're using your q when there's no minions in the way and obviously when you hit the champion you'll do more damage i wonder if that's a bigger heal or not that's something we'll learn more about later her W is made up of two sections. It is kind of like an active. Once you press it, you kind of transform form. And then once you press W for the second time, you'll transform back to another form. So first of all, I'm guessing you start the game on your horse. Although I don't know if you can really call it a horse, but I'm just gonna call it a horse anyway. So the first part can obviously only be cast while you're mounted on this horse. It is called Ferromancy Crash Down. And what happens is you leap into the sky and your mount transforms into heavy armor, giving you a huge shield that lasts until destroyed or remounted. So essentially, if you never remount and no one's attacking you, you kind of permanently have that shield, I guess. But obviously, it's not that easy to just run away with that shield because once you land, you first of all knock up all enemies around you, which works well with, for example, Yasuo or Ult. But you also have low movement speed when you're in this sh kind of shielded, heavy armored form. And also you have a movement speed cap, which I means you can't, for example, use Ghost probably. You can't use like Yomu's Ghost Blade and you're basically forced to fight wherever you landed. You also have increased durability. And I'm not sure if that means you just get armor and magic resist or you have tenacity. And one thing to note that during your transformation from the mounted form to the armored form, you can use your E and R as well. And then comes the second part of her W called Ferromancy Mount Up. You basically rush forward and then your armor turns into a mount giving you a burst of movement speed. Now I'm not sure how quickly you can use Mount Up after using Crash Down, but if you could technically use it instantly or with a very low cooldown. Once you've engaged the fight, you can just press your W and quickly dash away and get movement speed to run away if for example the engage wasn't a good engage but if it turns out it was a good engage and you want to bring your target closer to your adc or anyone else in the fight then instead of running away you can use the movement speed boost to attack your target and you'll deal bonus damage and also flip them behind you and while you're in your mounted form you have increased movement speed so obviously getting to lane i'm assuming 
you know, after you die, you'll just spawn back in your mount so you can get to lane fast. But in case you've backed while in your armored form, be sure to switch back to the mounted form so that you can get to lane faster. Her E, Attract and Repel, is really cool. You basically magnetically bind a piece of your armor to a target allied champion, and this gives them bonus armor and magic resist when you're nearby. So you pretty much always want to have this on while you're in the laning phase. And then what's really cool is, you can recast this ability to break the bind and stun all enemies in between you and your ally and also around you and your ally. So that's really cool. If for example, a jungler like Ramus is coming really fast and ganking your ADC, you can just press E and then because they're in the range of your ADC, they'll get stunned and your ADC has time to run away. But then once you've broken this, remember the bonus armor and magic resist on the ADC is probably gone until the cooldown comes back. So they do need to escape in that short time. But of course later in Team fights if you bind it to like an assassin and this is assuming that the range is kind of infinite or at least like Callista's binds that the bind only exists when you're near. What I mean by that is I don't think the bind will break if you go very far from the champ. I think it just deactivates so you don't get the bonus armor and magic resist but I think maybe when you come back near close to each other, the bind is kind of there. You don't have to rebind, but I'm not sure. Because if you can have it bound to someone that goes far away, but then comes back, you could bind yourself to an assassin. The assassin goes to the back line, and then you can press E and essentially stun the back line and everyone in the middle if you're positioned correctly, and everyone in the front line as well. And that would be really cool. Her ultimate is called Magnet Storm, and this is also really cool. She essentially erupts in a magnetic fury, yanking nearby enemies toward her. So it kind of feels like Victor's W when he's upgraded it. If you go in the middle of the team fight and press Alt and then everyone kind of lines up near you. And then she creates a gravitational field around her, pulling nearby enemies for a few seconds. So I kind of imagine in my mind like an Orn ulting and the enemy team's trying to dodge it, but then you kind of go in and you just use the gravity field to pull everyone in. And then as you can see from the video, she seems to be able to kind of move around everywhere and all the enemies inside that range are kind of stuck to her. So then you can use that to try to get the enemies into Orn's ult or pretty much any other ult to be honest. But it does say that the field doesn't interrupt the enemy's other actions. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by other actions because that implies that there's a current action and in the video, the Elise is kind of just standing there. So assuming other actions is literally doing anything, I'm guessing that means they probably can't move while they're in the gravity field, but they can still auto attack and I guess flash. Because if you flash out the field, then you're not really impacted by the gravity. Although I don't know how physics this is going to get. But in the event that the whole enemy team is basically auto attacking you or using their abilities trying to kill you while you're ulting, you probably want to be in the armored form and not the mounted form. I can imagine loads of cool combos with this champ. So I'm really excited to try her out when she's available. Now, if we go back to what W says, where you can use your E and your ultimate during your W, I guess an initial combo would be binding to your ally, queuing so that you destroy the enemy's shields and also giving your ally health as well as yourself. And then using your W to transform from the mounted form to the armor form and knocking up the enemies. But while you're doing that, pressing your E so that you stun everyone. And then just as the stun is about to wear off, use your ultimate so that you pull everyone towards you and bring them to the ADC so that they can get a pentakill. I think the new champion will probably be released on the 11th of December from what they've kind of said on the lobby uh, when you log on to leak, the leak client, I should call it. And then of course the new season on the 8th of January. Exciting times. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think about the new champion and whether you're excited or not. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And see you in the next one. Adios.